Hey everybody, this is Ebody and X from the Candid Frame. Welcome back. Before we jump into images, I want to let you know that I am going to be participating in Street Week in LA, which is a street photography workshop held in the city of Los Angeles. And it runs from February 4th to the 10th. And I, along with some other photographers, are going to be doing presentations in the evenings, conducting photo walks, and several workshops are also going to be conducted, and one by Nick Turpin, uh, most famous, or used to be most famously known for his uh, role in, in public, uh, an organization that he left, uh, I think, last year at some point. But if you're interested in street photography and you're going to be in the Los Angeles area during that time, you'll want to check it out. So visit lacphoto.org or click on the link below. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is one of the challenges that any of us have when we go out into the streets is, is trying to get the wheels greased. We're walking around with our cameras and we're trying to find a scene in which to photograph. And, and sometimes it can be a struggle to find an interesting setting upon which to build a, a composition. And we've talked a lot about using light and shadow uh, in terms of finding a, a scene and a location where you can make interesting photographs. But sometimes the light's not, not there, and, and, I was put, and the question was posed to me, well, what do you do when the light isn't that particularly dramatic, if the light is sort of overcast or, or flat? And my immediate go-to is to use diagonal lines, is to find a way to use lines and shapes in order to not only find an interesting setting, but build a, a composition. I've chosen three images which weren't necessarily shot in flat light, but to give you an idea of what to start to look for the next time you go out and shoot. Okay, here we have a shot by Ricky Marin. This was created with a Canon PowerShot G5X at 1 500th of a second, F8 ISO 160. Now, this is an obvious choice in terms of the use of diagonal lines. Here he is at what appears to be a train station, and we're dealing with a high contrast quality of, of light. And you can see that it is both the light and shadow play here, as well as the train and the train station and the wires that uh, are overhead that help create this, this flow of, of energy, of visual energy. You know, as you see here, all of these lines, the lines on the walkway, the lines of the train, the, the edge of the roof line here, are all leading us to the center of the frame where we have this figure walking towards us in either a red jacket or a red, or a red vest. And that in and of itself, even without the human figure in the element, adds a lot of energy to the overall frame. A lot of what we tend to do as street photographers, at least initially, is that, is that we find a wall or a backdrop, and the camera is parallel to the wall. So you basically have a flat scene. There's nothing very energetic, this, other than maybe the colors or the texture of the wall or the surface that you're allowing someone to walk in front of. And when you have an image like that, you are so reliant on having an interesting subject or character to walk inside of that that frame if you have great dramatic light then you rely on that a little more but sometimes you know that's just a little bit not only boring but you're too reliant on on finding an interesting human character to help complete the frame when you look for diagonal lines or implied diagonal lines you're already on the way to building a strong composition i think this composition already is is really effective, even without the human figure in there. It helps complete the frame, no doubt. It allows the eye to settle on something at this, you know, this this vanishing point towards the center of the frame. But even without the human figure, you can see how this composition takes shape. That because of the diagonal lines and the play of light and shadow, of course, and the color, you get the feeling like, God, this is a really good photograph, a really good composition on which to, to build. Now, if you find a scene like this, it pays to, to stay there and linger there because as, as good as this figure here is with the, with the shadow, you know, there could be other people that would come through this frame and maybe someone 
a little more interesting, somebody providing a much more physical flourish or, or gesture. But you're not so dependent on that human figure to make the shot work. As with the images that I just described before, where you just have a flat background and you're waiting for someone to have that has a lot of weight, not, not physical weight, but visual weight to them to complete the photograph. When you start building a shot that independent of the human figure is just a strong and interesting composition, you're well on your way to making a really effective photograph. Next, we have an image by Debbie Kwong. Uh, don't have an access data on this particular image. Now, here's here's the kind of image that I just referred to in terms of photographing a scene with a camera parallel to the, the wall or the surface uh, that you're using as a backdrop for the photograph. We have a wall here, really interesting colors, lines, shapes, etc. And you have some human figures that are in front of it creating an interesting image. But look at what happens because of the uh, decline or incline of this street. You have this really strong diagonal uh, line that is implied throughout the frame. You know, with the street that's, you know, going up here, and then you have these straight uh, lines here, or relatively straight, um, that serve as a counterpoint to that. And then you have this very strong diagonal that's created by this man pushing something up the, the street. I'm assuming it's a, a cart of, of, of some sort. And for me, the, the human figures are really interesting, and of course this guy in the foreground is really an important part of the photograph. But pay attention to what's happening just by the use of the diagonal lines. Yes, the camera is parallel to the plane that's in front of us, but the implied diagonal lines by the, of, of the street really provide some energy and some flow to the image that would normally be missing if it was just a straight street. At that point, yeah, the, the, the women who are posing in front of them might be interesting, and you might even have a really interesting element with the subject here pushing something up and out of frame. But you can see here how that diagonal line adds so much to the composition that would be completely missing had uh, Debbie here not photographed uh, the scene as she, as she did. Yes, the image has great color. It has great shape. This is a very overcast uh, day, so the light is not is relatively flat. There is no really hard uh, light and, and shadow contrast to play with, other than the shadow that's beneath the human figure here in the lower right-hand corner of the frame. But the, the, the thing that grabs my attention here is that that implied energy as the result of the, the diagonal. So you can you can find diagonals even when the camera is parallel to the to the plane that you're focusing on. But if you're not paying attention to it, you won't know how to leverage it. This is a bit of luck here with the with the guy moving through the frame. I would have liked for the camera to have moved a little further back so we wouldn't have cut off uh, his feet and maybe even got a gotten a hint in terms of what he's pushing. But nevertheless, you can really see in this particular photograph how diagonals can really add an important element to your photograph. Now, here's a shot by Jeff Hayward. This was created with a Canon Rebel T2i at 1/800th of a second, f3.5, ISO 100. Now, here's a shot where we're not dealing with any buildings at all. We're not dealing with any surfaces at all. This is just the water, the ocean, and these human figures that are coming out uh, of the water, which I think were was for this polar polar dip. Yeah, it says, says it right there in the in the caption. The, the first on the first day of the year, a bunch of people go out, dress crazily, and they jump into freezing water um, as a way to start the new year. Good for them. I'm not doing it, but it's great to see, and it's great and a great event to to photograph. As I've seen so many people uh, photograph it here, but what makes this shot work for me? is the implied diagonals. Because you basically have a triangle here that's created by these human figures with the guy here in the red shorts being the, the peak of this triangle. But look at, see what happens here, that the placement of all these figures here in relationship to him create this great diagonal line from the left to him and to the right. And then you have this horizon line in the back that you know 
completes this triangular shape that I, I often refer to. And you can see that that triangle is just repeated throughout with in terms of his arm placement, even his body placement, and the other, other figures in the frame. And it's a really great shot, not just because of his expression, not just because, you know, everybody here seems to be having a really wonderful time. It's a really good shot compositionally because of the way Jeff here uses those implied diagonal lines. Because though we don't have the architecture that gives us the obvi obvious clues that diagonal lines are being used here, here they're completely implied, but they're just as effective as they were for the previous two shots, especially the first one at the train station, where those diagonal lines help not only to guide the viewer's experience of the frame, but add that energy that I'm, I'm talking about. Jeff here is, is certainly shooting straight on. He's not shooting at an angle in order to evoke those diagonal movements, you know, those di to create those diagonal lines. He's basically using the placement of the people within the scene to do the very same thing. So you can see that when you're out there and you're looking for something interesting to photograph, sometimes you need to take a step back and not just look for character, not just look for, you know, real strong light and shadow. Take that moment to really look at the world graphically and disconnect from the events or the people that are playing out in front of you and, 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 and not look at it literally and instead look at it in terms of line and shape and see whether you can find in whatever scene that you're looking at and photographing those implied diagonal lines that are going to help you make a really strong composition. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, my new book, Making Photographs, Developing a Personal Visual Workflow is now available, and you can get it for 40% off the list price when you go to the Rocky Nook website and use the promo code PORELLO40. And uh, I've gotten a lot of good responses to the book thus far, and it just, you know, I just encapsulate all the principles that I teach on this YouTube channel and in my workshops into book form. And uh, I, I put my heart into this book, and I really think it can make a difference in terms of how you see and how you photograph, and uh, check it out. And if you really like what you, you read there, please write a review. It helps me a lot. And uh, The Candid Frame is my podcast, which I've been doing now for 13 years, which features conversations with photographers of all types. Uh, my latest conversation is with Jens Krauer, who is a street photographer based out of Switzerland. You may know him from his uh, hosting of the Fuji Love podcast. He's also a Fuji X photographer. But we don't really talk about the cameras uh, in our conversation. We really talk about the philosophy behind photography and getting better and, and specifically about street photography, which if you're watching this YouTube channel, I can assume you have an interest in. So check it out by visiting thecandidframe.com. And if you like what you're seeing in these, in these videos, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.